I thought I would use this episode to address um, a certain accusation that has been leveled against me that's going around various social media platforms. The accusation is that I am a traditionalist. Now, I understand traditionalist to mean a woman or person, doesn't have to be a woman, traditionalist is gender neutral, a person who believes that the traditional division of labor in which women stay at home and care for children and men go out and work is one that should be imposed on everyone. That it's, it's, it's I don't know, God-given. I'm an atheist, but okay, fine, we'll take it. This is the natural state of affairs, that women are entitled to men's labor and men's resources, and they are under no obligation to actually go out and earn a living themselves, that this is something that's completely at their own discretion. Yes, that's pretty much what we mean by traditionalist. It just couldn't be further from the truth. You've got to be kidding me. Absolutely not. Oh boy, I am so relieved to hear that, because there is this crazy MIGTO dude, he is going to conduct a trial for you, and determine if you are a traditionalist, and if he finds you guilty, he will destroy you and any white knight that gets in his way. Oh wait, that guy is me. Well then, super good on you for not being a traditionalist, but nonetheless, you have said things in the past that do cast suspicion, so the trial will continue. Do you know why I'm at home taking care of my children, earning jack fucking shit? Because I'm an idiot. That's why. Anyone supporting you and allowing it to happen is a bigger idiot, but do go on. Like most people going off to college, uh, I'll bet virtually all, all 18 year olds going off to college, I was encouraged to pursue my passions, pursue my dreams, uh, study something that interested me. You know, if you do what you love, you never work a day in your life, blah, 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 fucking horse shit, I bought it all. Most, virtually all, 18 year olds going to college, you say, but the ones with penises tend to find some magical way of earning a living, and often supporting a woman and children too. What did I think was awesome? What did I care about? What did I love? My first year in college? Well, I liked watching movies. What 18 year old doesn't? Okay, yeah. My interest, my passion, what I love? I like to watch movies. Is there a bullshit college degree in watching movies? Oh, you bet your ass there is. It's called film theory, and I enthusiastically enrolled and spent four years watching movies. Sounds like the course or two have been called housewife theory. It should be called that for two reasons. One, any woman with a degree in this will be qualified for nothing but being supported by a pussy begging male. Two, housewives spend the bulk of their time in front of the TV. It's the most difficult job on the planet. Yes, that makes me an idiot. It does. I'm, I'm not, I am totally not disputing that. Not at all. And what did my four years of watching movies qualify me to do? Make fucking lattes. Yeah. Or, you know, I could have folded clothes at The Gap, I suppose, or stocked shelves at Walmart. Why aren't you making lattes, folding clothes at The Gap, or stocking shelves at Walmart? My four years at college pursuing my dreams and my passions resulted in me being qualified to serve coffee to the smart kids who went and learned something useful. Okay, so I wised up to this fairly quickly, and I went and did an MBA, uh, Master's of Business Administration. Now, even then, even then, I still didn't fucking get it. You know what? Maybe you shouldn't be breeding? Didn't we just go over a video where you think the highest priority for a woman of exceptional intelligence is to breed so that the world could have smart babies? Perhaps that shit needs to be looked at in reverse. Maybe women like you are too fucking stupid to breed, and before anyone bitches at me here, 
she's the one telling us I'm so stupid, so stupid, hopelessly helplessly stupid, I just didn't get it, oh how I am just so stupid, okay, well maybe that was your first sign you shouldn't breed, because now you're going to pass that on to your kids, thanks for breeding stupid DNA into the world, great job, and again, before anyone bitches at me for being an ass, I'm only applying the shit she said in previous videos, she gets to pass judgment on who needs to be breeding, maybe she should take a dose of her own medicine, Janet, honey, the world needs latte servers, and clothes folders, shelf stockers, and toilet scrubbers, someone has to do these jobs, and Janet, you've already shown that even with a college degree, you can't seem to do anything, I think your natural role in life is stocking shelves, when you go to the grocery store and buy canned goods, how do you think those cans got on the shelves, someone fucking stocked them, that is a function needed in our society, that is a way you can contribute to our society, you made a video saying smart women, above all things, need to breed, you then make a video calling yourself stupid, put it together honey, by your own convoluted logic, you shouldn't be breeding, you should have a job stocking shelves, saving up that money to hire a smart woman for your husband to impregnate, that way you get to raise her smart babies, actually, if your husband is dumb enough to have married you, and props you up with his own hard work, maybe he shouldn't be breeding either, he should be stocking shelves, you should be babysitting some smart career woman's babies. I didn't. I went into the MBA thinking, yes, getting me some practical skills here. I was also husband hunting. I'm not, no, absolutely will not deny that. I was getting to an age, you know, you hit your mid-twenties and you're like, okay, um, if this is what you want, you're going to have to make it a priority. So I was, I was husband hunting, absolutely, while I was in that program. Um, but I still didn't really get that how I would combine paid employment with a family and with marriage was really important. I could have done something useful like management accounting. I could have done chartered financial planning. I could have done a whole bunch of useful things, but I just followed my interests. You know what I was interested in? International business strategy. Yeah, I just love, let's just understand how the whole world works together financially. It's cool, it's interesting. Um, total idiot. But Janet, there are people in this world making money with that degree. Same with film theory, not that either one of these degrees has great turnout. But there are people using these degrees to get their foot in the door of businesses. Film theory can be useful in journalism, and being a film critic. Although film studies would have been better as it incorporates film theory, Anita Sarkeesian is doing pretty good for herself with a useless communications degree. Well it would be nice if she used her powers for niceness instead of evil, but that's besides the point. Point is, with enough ambition, the degrees you have could land you an eventual career. Ladies, think of your degree as being like your vagina. You use it to hypergamously climb your way up, in the same way that you use your pussy to hook up with a man and then leave him for a man with bigger muscles, or a faster car, or more dollars, and then you leave that guy for a more stable income man, and then you divorce him and hook up with his boss, and you just keep climbing your way up. Do that with your degree, Janet you talk about husband shopping because you were prioritizing, maybe you should have been prioritizing by looking for a more profitable field of study. Total and complete idiot choosing my majors. Now I lucked out. I met my husband in grad school, and we had a lot of discussions the whole time that we were dating about what we wanted out of life, what our goals were, um, what we wanted to achieve, what we wanted to accomplish, how we wanted our day-to-day -day life to look. And at no point did either one of us, my husband included, ever stop to think how I would be able to contribute to our family financially. It's just not a conversation that is encouraged. Well Migto is trying to change that. We are trying to convince men that he needs to break away from the notion that part of his identity as a so-called real man is to support a family, be the breadwinner. We encourage men, if you have to date and fuck and all that, and you just have to have a family, at least ask yourself what does this woman bring to the table? If the bitch has a ticking biological clock and a masters in film theory, you need to avoid that bitch like she got AIDS. If she got a masters in something with the word engineering, she might bring home a paycheck. If men, on average, started expecting a woman to do more than spread their legs, women would take money making more seriously, 
and quit living like entitled parasites that bring down the quality of men and pretty much all of society. We do not encourage young women or young men to think about their ambitions and think about their choices in terms of how that is going to impact the family they would like to have if they want to have a family. And th that's the reality. Most people would like to have children. You know, you say you are not living off of your husband because you feel entitled to a man's labor, but yes, actually that is what you are doing. Your degree qualifies you to serve lattes to smarter people. Well then, go serve lattes, unless of course that is beneath you, your highness, your claim that your husband props you up because you are too stupid. You know what, here's the thing, it is husbands like yours, that create the safety net that women know is there, which gives women the luxury to make the mistakes women like you have made. Why take your college courses seriously if you're allowed to fail and be caught by the safety net of beta males? Why push and muscle your way up the ladder with your degrees when using your vagina is so much easier? Men need to quit acting like such thirsty whores. Men need to quit propping women up. Men need to quit catching women when they fall. Women will stop failing when men stop allowing them to. Women will stop divorcing men when men stop marrying them. Women will stop hurting men when men stop allowing them. Migto tell men to wake up and respect himself. Traditionalism says no close your eyes, don't modify the behavior that got you into this mess, just scapegoat feminism. This is why MIGTO is a vital idea to slowly spread throughout the collective male conscious. But enough of that, I find you guilty of living the traditional lifestyle, I find you guilty of believing yourself entitled to it in spite of all your excuse making, but your personal life decisions are not what's on trial, your politics, your propaganda is, thus far. There is nothing in this video that suggests you are advocating traditionalism as a proper social model, in fact you are actually addressing the fact that women do walk into college like stumbling bumbling idiots, taking stupid courses in feel goodism and women's studies, and as a result they are graduating college with a mountain of debt, and no real immediate job prospects, and of course they blame patriarchy, then find a sugar daddy to provide for them, and then divorce him, and he'll blame everything on feminism, but hey, I already covered that, point is, you may not be walking the walk, but you are talking the talk of men's liberation, at least so far in this video, you are denouncing traditionalism, well actually you're mostly just making excuses for living as a traditionalist, but so far, your video here, your newest video, is not gynocentric, it is not traditionalist, however, right about here is where we start to veer off that trail. Most people would like to see those children raised at home. 70% of women in a Forbes survey said that being a stay-at-home parent was their new American dream. An almost unattainable dream because they didn't make the choices they needed to make to give themselves any choices. Where does this come from? Where does this reluctance to discuss how our ambitions and aspirations affect what we want out of life in terms of family come from. Well, I think you can trace it right back to Simone de Beauvoir. Okay, this is where it gets weird, folks. Simone de Beauvoir, let's keep in mind, this is a woman who chased Jean-Paul Sartre across Europe, trying to get him to marry her. He would not. Ironically, he knew that being married meant that he would have to give up all of his mistresses because fidelity would be assumed. He wouldn't do that. She lived in apartments with him while he fucked other women in the other room. Here is a woman desperately trying to get married, writing this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this from memory, but I'm. you can just Google it. I'm pretty sure this is accurate. No woman should be authorized to stay at home and care for her children, because if that is a choice, too many women will make it, and society must be totally different. Okay, it's Marxist feminism. Follow the money. What, what, what? What, what, what? What, what, what? Okay, you know what? I have to rewind this shit. Let's start from where all this shit went weird, you were saying you made bad choices in college and you and your husband didn't talk about who would do what in a family or how you'd provide for the family and so on, you conclude all of this is because it is not encouraged by our society to talk about these things, and you go on to say this stuff here. Most people would like to see those children raised at home. 70% of women in a Forbes survey said that being a stay-at-home parent was their new American dream. 
an almost unattainable dream because they didn't make the choices they needed to make to give themselves any choices. Where does this come from? Where does this reluctance to discuss how our ambitions and aspirations affect what we want out of life in terms of family come from? Well, I think you can trace it right back to Simone de Beauvoir. Simone de Beauvoir, let's keep in mind, this is a woman who chased Jean-Paul Sartre across Europe, trying to get him to marry her. He would not. Ironically, he knew that being married meant that he would have to give up all of his mistresses because fidelity would be assumed. He wouldn't do that. She lived in apartments with him while he fucked other women in the other room. Here is a woman desperately trying to get married, writing this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this from memory, but I'm. you can just Google it. I'm pretty sure this is accurate. No woman should be authorized to stay at home and care for her children, because if that is a choice, too many women will make it, and society must be totally different. Hey, it's Marxist feminism. Follow the money. Holy shit, Janet. Talk about some out of left field nonsense. Let's try to make sense of this. Janet Bloomfield is a traditionalist stay-at-home mom because she made bad decisions in college that make her unable to earn a great wage. This happened because people don't talk about their role in a family, because a feminist who was obsessed with some guy, wrote a book stating women shouldn't have a choice in being a stay-at-home mom, because Marxist feminism, Janet Bloomfield is a stay-at-home mom because, she's the victim of a communist plot, Janet Bloomfield is a stay-at-home mom because she is fighting a communist plot, I'm sorry. But I am seriously confused on this shit. Let's go over this one more time, piece by piece. Most people would like to see those children raised at home. What does that mean? Where else are they getting raised? You mean most people want their kids homeschooled? If so I find that hard to believe because the majority of women that don't work, don't bother to homeschool their kids. I don't know what raised at home means. You mean the year or two of daycare that very few children experience? I'm not sure what you mean by raised at home, like there is some epidemic of children being raised somewhere else. Anyhow, I can't argue this because I am not sure what you mean, so let's just skip it. 70% of women in a Forbes survey said that being a stay-at-home parent was their new American dream. Tough shit. Of course being a sit-on-your-lazy-twat housewife is the American dream. What about men? What do they want? Does it even matter? What parent wouldn't? all things being equal, like to stay at home raising their toddlers, what parent, all things being equal, wouldn't like to relax at home waiting for the kids to get out of school, I think parents of both sexes want that, only women get that choice, of course that choice is slipping away from them, and they are blaming feminism, and so these gynocentric misandrous feminists are jumping the feminist ship and coming to the MRM, and their husbands are trying to come to toe. anyhow, to hell with what women want. I'm sure men would like to stay at home and be a stay at home father, unfortunately women have self respect and won't support no broke ass man, women got self respect, men don't, so men prop up their parasite of a wife, and then rather admitting he is just whipped, weak, and desperate, he creates convoluted excuses to do for her what she is not willing to do for him, such excuses as daycare turns children into psychopaths, nuclear family values, communist conspiracy, my god given natural role, whatever excuse he can manufacture to get around the fact the woman he supports, would not do the same for him. Anyhow, 70% of women said their dream is to be a stay-at-home mom. An almost unattainable dream, because they didn't make the choices they needed to make to give themselves any choices. What what what? What? I'm sorry, say that again. An almost unattainable dream, because they didn't make the choices they needed to make to give themselves any choices. They didn't make the choices they needed to make to give themselves any choices, is why they can't be stay at home mums. What choices are you talking about? Janet, you start off by saying you are a stay at home mum because you made bad college decisions. So, if you made good college decisions you would be a career woman splitting your parenting time with your husband? These women, who cannot be stay at home mothers, because they have a career, made bad decisions. So parasitically leeching off of a man is a good choice to make? I assume that's the message, after all, they made a choice to have a career. They also made the choice to have a child, 
So why can't they be a full-time mum? Apparently because they have a career, if I am misunderstanding the situation, and these women in a Forbes magazine said they wanted to be full-time mothers, this was their dream, what are they, part-time working single parent moms, if so, what's the alternative, sticking some beta male simp with the work and leeching off of him, and the problem is the market doesn't allow sugar daddies enough money to prop up a parasite of a woman, I'm just seriously confused here, let me back this shit up one more time, I'm trying to really figure out what she is saying. And at no point did either one of us, my husband included, ever stop to think how I would be able to contribute to our family financially. You wanted babies and went husband shopping in college while taking stupid college courses. You and your future husband never talked about your role in providing money to the family. Something tells me you were in parasite mode, knowing you'd never pay off your student loan, so you were too busy giving him a blowjob every time the subject of your future career and finances, and your student loan came up, I'm thinking a quick and immediate BJ to circumvent addressing these issues until after you got him locked into a marriage contract, was probably what was going on, but you have another theory, this lack of discussing a woman's role in the family unit, this is the thing you are trying to explain, the reason for this problem, this problem of having kids without discussing how the woman is going to contribute money to the family. It's just not a conversation that is encouraged. And now you're going to explain why this conversation is not encouraged. We do not encourage young women or young men to think about their ambitions and think about their choices in terms of how that is going to impact the family they would like to have if they want to have a family. Here's where you are deviating. Remember, you're supposed to be explaining why young couples in college are not discussing how a woman is going to bring home money for the family. Now you are bending the question to. Why aren't we encouraged to discuss the division of labor? And th that's the reality. Most people would like to have children. Most people would like to see those children raised at home. 70% of women in a Forbes survey said that being a stay-at-home parent was their new American dream. An almost unattainable dream because they didn't make the choices they needed to make to give themselves any choices. What you said is gibberish. Where does this come from? Where does this reluctance to discuss how our ambitions and aspirations affect what we want out of life in terms of family come from? Keep in mind, the original question here is, why didn't you and your husband discuss how you were going to contribute money to the family? You've then morphed the conversation to why didn't we discuss division of labor? You're now making this slightly more vague with. Where does? not discussing, how our ambitions and aspirations affect what we want out of life, in terms of family, come from. Where does this come from? Where does this reluctance to discuss how our ambitions and aspirations affect what we want out of life in terms of family come from? Well, I think you can trace it right back to Simone de Beauvoir. Simone de Beauvoir, let's keep in mind, this is a woman who chased Jean-Paul Sartre across Europe trying to get him to marry her. He would not. Ironically, he knew that being married meant that he would have to give up all of his mistresses because fidelity would be assumed. He wouldn't do that. She lived in apartments with him while he fucked other women in the other room. Here is a woman desperately trying to get married, writing this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this from memory, but I'm. you can just Google it. I'm pretty sure this is accurate. No woman should be authorized to stay at home and care for her children because if that is a choice, too many women will make it and society must be totally different. It's Marxist feminism. Follow the money. Holy fucking shit. You're fucking crazy, bitch. You ain't making sense with the words you're saying. You're trying to tell me. The reason you and your husband did not discuss your income to the family, division of labor, or long-term family plans or whatever, is because we as a society are not encouraged to talk about these things. We as a society are not encouraged to talk about these things because some obscure bitch I never heard of, no one's ever heard of, wrote a book about wanting a guy, and not liking, that, women, wanted, to be, stay-at-home mothers, because, oh god damn it I had to look this up. The woman spoke this quote in dialogue with Simone de Voyer by Betty Friedan. I can't even find the context in which she spoke it. Anyhow, 
obscure socialist who eventually identified as feminist, once made an obscure quote to Betty Friedan is why people aren't discussing their future finances and division of labor when conceiving of having a family. God damn it Janet, are you on fucking drugs? The more you cripple a family, the more you make a family an absolutely utterly ineffective way of supporting individuals. Wait wait wait, what? So if a woman does not get to be a stay-at-home mother, it cripples the family, you just went from I am not insisting that traditionalism is the way to go, and I myself am only a stay-at-home mom because I am too stupid to make money to telling women to pull their own weight cripples a family, oh no, certainly no preaching of traditionalism going on here. The more you cripple a family, the more you make a family an absolutely utterly ineffective way of supporting individuals. How, first off? How is family supporting individuals, like, I get that family can do favors for you, but so do friends, but whatever, again, how does women financially contributing to the family, cripple the family, and how the fuck did that Simone bitches quote to Betty Friedan make it happen? Friends. Hey, it's Marxist feminism, follow the money. The more you cripple a family, the more you make a family an absolutely utterly ineffective way of supporting individuals inside that family, the more you need a big state. Wait, 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 why? So if women start getting jobs and helping their husbands pay bills, and fathers get more time to spend with their children, taking an active role in being a father, not just a wage earner, this cripples families, and when families are crippled, it creates a bigger state, how, again, how does a woman helping her husband pay the bills, cripple the family, how does a woman's income, allowing a man to work less hours, have a more flexible job, and thus spend more time being a dad, cripple the family, and again, no one is discussing jobs, income, flexible hours, division of labor, because, communism, obscure feminist quote. The more you need state employees, the more you need, oh guess what, jobs for women who are essentially unqualified to do anything other than file papers alphabetically. Wait wait, wait, so it works like this, there is a communist plot, set up by our own government, to grow itself, or a communist plot to grow and expand its enemy, that is a capitalist republic, at either rate, a communist plot to expand non-communist governments, by crippling the family, caused by women getting jobs, because a French feminist made a quote to Betty Friedan, and this crippling of the family by women being employed is why couples are not being encouraged, note, there is nothing said of discouragement, only not actively encouraged, to talk about these things. Because that fucking quote by that woman, this whole thing, this whole convoluted mess, is so that communists can expand the size of a republic, so that the republic can hire more government employees, so they can create jobs, so that women can work, and when women work, it's not high paying jobs, and they suck at doing the work because, government plot, so let me get this straight. Communists used feminists to convince women to get jobs, so that families would be crippled, so that a non-communist government would grow so that they could hire more government employees so that these employees would create menial task jobs for these women to cripple the family, and now we have hit circular logic, god damn it this is more convoluted than a Vince Russo inspired TNA pay per view main event, this has enough plot twists it would make M. Night Shyamalan's head spin, and all of this horse shit, this is why you aren't contributing money to your family, but are instead, sitting around being a stay-at-home mom like a traditional woman, thereby actually proving this communist plot has backfired and reinforced traditionalism. God damn it people, I don't know if Janet Bloomfield is a traditionalist or a goddamn fucking schizophrenic, furthermore, am I the only one getting tired of blame communism becoming the go-to boogeyman behind everything the right-wingers don't like, am I the only person getting sick to death of this horse shit about how every negative aspect of life can be traced to some ultra complex convoluted multi-generational super crypto communist plot to undermine our nation, I mean if it's true, fuck capitalism, sign me up for some communism, because these communists, in order to have pulled off this many different amazing double, triple, quadruple plot twists to dupe all the world's superpowers into becoming communists, is by far the greatest achievement in all of human history, these fuckers must be made up of the Ben Franklins, Albert Einsteins, Nikola Teslas, and Friedrich Nietzsche's of the world, never have such ultra brilliant and devious minds ever come together in the entirety of humanity, if they are this amazingly brilliant, sign me up, I want to be on the winning team, capitalists, give it up, these fuckers are playing a game of chess with you, 
and they are 3571 moves ahead of you, you won't even see the brilliance of their devious plans finally unfold to its ultimate conclusion until the year 3000 when we're all living on Mars as a result of their 18th century plotting, you think you can win against communism, fuck no, they done built the pyramids and Stonehenge, they are the heads of every secret society and pull the strings of the Illuminati and we're all dancing to their tune, seriously tired of hearing communist conspiracies, look, Janet, you're batshit crazy, nothing you are saying is adding up, it's a bizarre convoluted mess, and I am about tired of the ridiculous communist conspiracy theories, yes, I get cultural, biological, Marxism being a derivative of economic Marxism, with the ultimate aim of eliminating cultural hierarchy, as the first step to eliminating class hierarchy thereby removing all archie, that is the final conclusion of the socialist experiment being an equal society with no rulers, anarchy and I understand certain destabilization factors that come out of critical theory, which ought to be called cynical cultural theory, did communists ever plot to destabilize capitalist nations, yes, is modern day political correctness, social justice warriors, the pathology of cultural Marxism, yes, but that's about as far as that goes, you commophobic tradcan motherfuckers need to chill, you need to quit seeing communist boogie men around every corner, you people are seriously entering into tinfoil hat territory, if Janet Bloomfield's convoluted communist conspiracy theory was not the ultimate jump the shark moment of communist conspiracy theory, I don't know what is, let's go over, just one more time, how fucking convoluted, contradictory, and downright schizophrenic her whole story is, she can't contribute money to her family because she made bad college choices and she didn't discuss this with her husband because, take it away Janet. Their new American dream an almost unattainable dream, because they didn't make the choices they needed to make to give themselves any choices. Where does this come from? Where does this reluctance to discuss how our ambitions and aspirations affect what we want out of life in terms of family come from? Well, I think you can trace it right back to Simone de Beauvoir. Simone de Beauvoir, let's keep in mind, this is a woman who chased Jean-Paul Sartre across Europe, trying to get him to marry her. He would not. Ironically, he knew that being married meant that he would have to give up all of his mistresses because fidelity would be assumed. He wouldn't do that. She lived in apartments with him while he fucked other women in the other room. Here is a woman desperately trying to get married, writing this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this from memory, but I'm, you can just Google it. I'm pretty sure this is accurate. No woman should be authorized to stay at home and care for her children, because if that is a choice, too many women will make it, and society must be totally different. Okay, it's Marxist feminism. Follow the money. The more you cripple a family, the more you make a family an absolutely, utterly ineffective way of supporting individuals inside that family, the more you need a big state, the more you need state employees, the more you need, oh, guess what, jobs for women who are essentially unqualified to do anything other than file papers alphabetically and answer the fucking phone. Sorry, you don't like those numbers? Go check the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Number one occupation for women is still administrative assistant. They file shit alphabetically, they know the days of the week, they can tell time, and they manage to answer the phone. Wow, big achievement. Well done, ladies. Communists gave women jobs, and those jobs suck, and women suck at these jobs because, communism, again, let's not stop and consider a major factor in women not achieving the same level of success, is because success is a choice for a woman, it is mandatory for men, when women make dumb college decisions, we cast traditionalist males are there to catch them when they fall and pick them up, put them on their proper princess pedestals, women know this, they rely on this, so even when they graduate with film theory degrees, instead of pushing non-stop furiously and vigorously to get their foot in the door of film or journalism, and to augment their education like their life depended on it, they just serve lattes for a couple of years and become stay-at-home moms, whereas men succeed because women will not act as a safety net, when you are male, you take whatever stupid degree you have, every tool, every skill, you have, and you act like MacGyver with the few resources you have, to succeed, because your life depends on survival, 
the problem being traditionalist men creating the eternal safety net for women, that leads to achievement differences, nope, it's communism. Good job. So, like most women, and most men, I'd never had this conversation with anyone about how my choices would affect the family that I wanted. Consequently, I made fucking dumbass choices. Film? Film theory? Are you kidding me? I'm not, actually. I sat there and I watched films for four years, and then I followed it up with a degree in international strategy. I'm at home because I'm an idiot. If I could do my life again, choose my education again, I wouldn't even go to college. There's not a chance. There are so many awesome things that I could be doing right now that I could learn and trade in technical schools. But instead, you're sitting on your ass being a stay-at-home mom. Not that you feel entitled to do this or anything, since you're talking a big game about how you do it different this time. What's stopping you from doing it now? Oh let me guess, you got to be with the children 24-7. How convenient. Oh, and when all of your kids are grown up, old enough to come home from being at public school all day, and fix themselves something to eat, and are perfectly self-reliant in that regard, are you going to have a job then? Maybe you will. And will you ever really go anywhere in the job? No, of course not, because of communism, or patriarchy, or illuminati, or maybe because you know that getting up and leaving the warm comfortable house is an option, your job will be a hobby, and if you fuck up, the husband will always be there, your husband will never have such an option, if he fucks up and can't afford you anymore, I smell a divorce on the horizon, let's be real, you have an invisible gun to his head telling him he better not fuck up, you have a warm soft pillow to land on when you fall and crash, let's face it, because of that, he will always be more successful, not because of communism, and what happens if your husband were to die, become too ill to continue working, go to jail, becomes a drug addict or alcoholic, what will you do, work 60 hours a week alternating between working at the gap and serving lattice, fuck no, divorce him, get the state to pay welfare, make him pay child support, and blame communist inspired divorce culture, your lack of being able to provide for your family, means everything rides on your husband's shoulders, should those shoulders break, your whole family is fucked, look, I'm not trying to bring you down, I'm trying to get you to see that the divorce problem, the inequality, the lack of career achievement between men and women, is not the fault of some communist conspiracy, it is the fault of traditionalism, the traditional model, and we cast males who buy a woman's love and affection, expect nothing out of them, and are always there to act as women's safety nets, is what leads to the bulk of the problems being blamed on a super elaborate communist conspiracy. That would give me the opportunity to contribute financially to my family while still being the kind of wife and mother I want to be. I wish to fucking God I was a hairdresser. Do you know how much money I could make if I knew how to do foil highlights in my basement? What's stopping you now? I mean, those double color foil highlights, full long hair, you're talking minimum 120 bucks in a salon. Imagine if I could cut that in half, 60 bucks. I can earn $60 a day in my basement just having one client. Hour and a half, 90 minutes. Me wow, this is sincerely a fascinating story, to think. I could be wasting my time listening to Stardusk, or having sex with John Hembling's girlfriend, but no, listening to your heartache and self-pity is a much better use of my time. Maybe two hours, depending on how much we chat. I mean, it's not, it's not a ton of money, but it's a bit, and it would make a difference. If I knew how to do manicures, if I could do nails, people getting all of their fake nail bullshit done, if I knew how to do that, I could be running a salon in my basement. My neighbor, you're not going to believe this, but... By all means, Mrs. Bloomfield, don't let me interrupt you. Do continue pointlessly rambling with your self-pity. It's an absolute word of truth. My neighbor makes wedding cakes. She's an artist. She's utterly fantastic. She makes the most stunningly beautiful cakes you've ever seen. She works in her kitchen. She makes two cakes a week. Minimum price is a thousand dollars. Not kidding. Most of them are closer to two thousand dollars because she's just that fantastic. That is fantastic. Do go on. Two cakes, 
$2,000, $4,000 a week. She's with her boys full time. They have never spent a single minute in daycare. You can guess how much her husband loves her. I mean, it's, it's crazy. I'm not at home because I think women belong at home. I'm not at home earning no money because I think I'm entitled to the labor and effort of men. I'm at home because I'm an idiot. Let's get on with this, shall we? Let's summarize this video. Removing the convoluted Marxist feminist conspiracy to cripple the family. Removing that weirdness from your video. Here are the points I am getting. I'm not a traditionalist. On the surface, it might look like I'm a traditionalist. Yeah, I'm at home. I don't earn money. It's not because I think I have a right to do that. It's not because I think I'm entitled to do that. It's because I made stupid fucking choices. It's my fault. I am not blaming anyone else. I made dumbass choices. But as long as we're not going to talk about this, people are going to continue to make the same stupid choices. I would like to use my voice to help other people make smarter choices. And by people, I mean people. Men and women. I'm sort of glad that I've been accused of being a traditionalist. I'm not here to exploit men. I don't think men are disposable. I don't think anyone is disposable. And I'm not just interested in choices for women. I want to see men have choices. Real ones. I don't care who's at home. Mummy, daddy, mummy and daddy working part time, figuring it out, grandma steps in, loving family members are there to care. It's none of my goddamn business. If you're a guy who wants to be at home and take care of your children full time, which I applaud. When I moved into my house nine years ago, my next door neighbor had an eight month old daughter and his wife used to pump breast milk and he would take that bottle and warm it up and tuck it under his arm and hold his daughter like he was breastfeeding her and she's a beautiful little girl. Absolutely men can take care of children just as efficiently and lovingly as women can. Okay, now let's go over these statements while I overlay the point in text. I'm not a traditionalist. On the surface, it might look like I'm a traditionalist. Yeah, I'm at home. I don't earn money. It's not because I think I have a right to do that. It's not because I think I'm entitled to do that. It's because I made stupid fucking choices. It's my fault. I am not blaming anyone else. I made dumbass choices. But as long as we're not going to talk about this, people are going to continue to make the same stupid choices. I would like to use my voice to help other people make smarter choices. And by people, I mean people. Men and women. I'm sort of glad that I've been accused of being a traditionalist. I'm not here to exploit men. I don't think men are disposable. I don't think anyone is disposable. And I'm not just interested in choices for women. I want to see men have choices. Real ones. I don't care who's at home. Mummy, daddy, mummy and daddy working part time, figuring it out, grandma steps in, loving family members are there to care. It's none of my goddamn business. If you're a guy who wants to be at home and take care of your children full time, which I applaud. When I moved into my house nine years ago, my next door neighbor had an eight month old daughter and his wife used to pump breast milk and he would take that bottle and warm it up and tuck it under his arm and hold his daughter like he was breastfeeding her and she's a beautiful little girl. Absolutely men can take care of children just as efficiently and lovingly as women can. It's not easy being her defender and prosecutor, but from those seven statements, I don't see traditionalism, conservatism, or gynocentrism. However, Janet Bloomfield seems to be an odd little nut. And then there are the quotes we got from Diana. This trial will continue. Stonehenge. What? 
The word is Stonehenge, not Stonehenge. Also, you said collective conscious, when what you meant to say was collective conscience. Just loading my gun, don't let me interrupt you. I value it when you correct my grammar. Oh, well, in that case, right in the beginning you said, then, when you meant, then. And don't get me started on how many times you said gender role, when you meant gender role. And then there was that embarrassing mistake. Oh, I get it now, you were being sarcastic. Razor, not to complain too much, but I'm losing blood, can you take me to the hospital? Why do all my friends have to be bleeders? If you'd quit shooting us, it wouldn't really matter. By the way I'm charging you for this hospital visit. And I'm charging you for this ambulance ride, so we're even. Razor, why don't you involve me in more of your skits? Because you sound too much like that skull in the Kool-Aid picture, and you're only funny when you're getting shots. In fact everyone is entertaining when getting shots. Besides, every time I try to give you the spotlight, Kate gets jealous and wants to do something. In fact I am surprised she hasn't popped up out of nowhere, from the trunk or the back seat. It's not like her to not mind her own business. Why is it that women just can't keep their noses out of other people's business? Oh, you mean like conducting a trial of other people on the internet? You know Paul, I still have my gun with me. It's not too late to turn this hospital trip into a trip to the morgue. Alright, I'll hush. By the way, Razor, what doctor is going to take me with a bullet wound? Doesn't that shit have to be reported to the police? Myth of feminism. He's in Mexico, they don't care where the bullet came from, they have a don't ask don't tell, just pay me in cash, policy. But myth of feminism is a dentist. You have a cavity in your arm, and he does cavities. He'll put a little sodium fluoride in the arm cavity, stick you right up, you'll be good as new. I don't think dental cavities and bullet cavities get covered by the same medicine. Besides, isn't fluorine highly toxic? Oh sweet Jesus Paul, whatever you do, don't bring that up to him, just don't mention that, 